Did a Marine Corps colonel, retired, commit perjury when he appeared in a court under oath as a, an expert witness for California in the case involving a California assault weapon ban? <laughs> oh boy, this is a good one. You are not going to believe some of the crap that came out of this colonel's mouth. I want to thank the sponsor of the video, and that's Blackout Coffee. I'm one of the owners. Uh, we're here in America, made by Americans, small company that is growing. Blackoutcoffee.com slash G&G if you want to order coffee, tea, or hot chocolates. Let's talk about that growing. Uh, we are expanding to the point where if you're interested, you can invest in the company. You want to know more? Then head to the link in the description. And uh, thank you for your consideration. Blackoutcoffee.com slash G&G to order some goods. And the other link in the description, help us grow and maybe become one of the owners. All right, guys and gals, so Rupp v. Bonta. It's a case that's ongoing, challenging the assault weapon ban in California. And Attorney General Bonta in California rolled out uh, his expert witness in this case. And if you follow my socials, you would have seen me forward this a couple days ago and finally getting around to being able to record this. And this is phenomenal. If you are someone who knows about guns, you'll understand how infuriating this can be. And if you're somebody who is an anti-gunner, I hope you pay attention with an open mind because uh, this, this, this colonel's about to get schooled. How crazy are his claims, you say? Well, he says that, among other things, one round of 223 can tear a body in half. Yeah, let's get to this one. Here is the first page of the expert witness testimony of Colonel Craig Tucker, a retired colonel of the United States Marine Corps. Now I'm going to show you his statement of qualifications because I think it is important to build this and to show where he thinks he's coming from. And then I want you to tell me if he committed perjury on the stand. I, Colonel Retired Craig Tucker, declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct. I'll say that again. I, Colonel Craig Tucker, retired, declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct. I have been asked by the Office of the Attorney General of California Department of Justice to prepare an expert report and declaration on the purpose, use, and features of certain semi-automatic firearms. This supplemental expert report and declaration is based on my own personal knowledge and experience and if I am called as a witness, I could and would testify competently to the truth of the matter discussed in this report. Well, let's go over the Colonel's professional qualifications. I am a Colonel, U.S. Marine Corps, retired. I served as an infantry officer in the Marine Corps for 25 years. I have commanded infantry units from platoon to regiment. I commanded Regimental Combat Team 7 in Iraq from February of 2004 to April of 2005. During my time in Iraq, I commanded 22 different U.S. Marine, U.S. Army, and Iraqi Army battalions and exercised tactical control over Naval Special Warfare and U.S. Special Forces and supported National Tier 1 assets. I commanded the regiment in both Fallujah battles and numerous smaller battles. I was the target of nine assassination attempts and was wounded in Iraq in July of 2004. Upon my return from Iraq, I was assigned to the U.S. Marine Corps National Training Center and was responsible for training and certifying units for combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay, pretty, pretty high-speed cat, right? He should know his stuff. He should. Let's go here, page 3, paragraph 6. Through my military service, I gained extensive knowledge and familiarity with the full range of U.S. combat weapon systems. The automatic rifle is the foundational combat weapon system. Ground and aviation weapon systems are specifically designed to support the automatic rifle. My primary purpose in the latter stages of my career was coordinating and teaching others to coordinate air and ground weapon systems to support the rifleman and his automatic rifle. I have fired the Colt AR-15 5.56 rifle and the Smith & Wesson 5.56 AR rifle. Both are advertised as the civilian version of the M16 combat rifle. In addition to my automatic rifle experience, I have extensive experience with the AK-47 having been on the receiving end of hundreds of 7.62 rounds, an experience best typified during the Battle of Hit when a single individual with one rifle 
an apparently in inexhaustible supply of 7.62 ammo and magazines kept nine Marines pinned down for 15 minutes until a LAV 25 20 millimeter chain gun solved the problem. I have extensive experience with the Colt 1911 .45 caliber semi-automatic and the Beretta 9mm semi-automatic pistol and used both weapons in Iraq. Okay, now he's got experience, although being shot at with a certain firearm does not make you an expert in that weapon system. Just saying. Uh, let's continue because it's about to get it's about to get really, really good. Now let's get into his opinion. This is his legal opinion he's giving to the court. Remember, under the penalties of perjury, that it is true and correct. I have reviewed the statutory definitions of assault weapons as defined under California Assault Weapons Control Act in California Penal Code Section 30515A Alpha. Under that penal code, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that does not have a fixed magazine qualifies as an assault weapon if it has any of the following features. A pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, a thumb hole stock, a folding or telescoping stock, a grenade or flare launcher, a flash suppressor, or a forward pistol grip. A semi-automatic centerfire rifle also qualifies as an assault weapon if it is equipped with a fixed magazine with the capacity to hold more than 10 rounds or has an overall length of less than 30 inches. Now for the juicy paragraph. I am familiar with the features, accessories, and capabilities of rifles regulated by the penal code. The AR-15, like the M4, is an offensive combat weapon system. The only difference is the AR-15 cannot fire on full auto, continual shots fired in succession so long as the trigger is pulled, or burst, several shots fired in succession with a single pull of the trigger. A picayune difference that cannot serve to support a non-combat role for the AR-15. In my experience, soldiers are trained to set select fire weapons to semi-auto mode so that a single round is fired with each pull of the trigger. An M4 or M16 on full automatic is an area fire weapon. The auto rate of fire makes the weapon too difficult to control on a point target. Rifle fire on full automatic is not aimed fire, uses an excessive amount of ammunition, and will damage the weapon if used too often. In fact, in my 14 months of combat, I did not once see an M4 or M16 fired on full auto. Semi-auto function is used almost exclusively in combat. When operated in semi-auto mode, the AR-15 and M4 share the rates of fire. The same maximum effective range, the same maximum range, use the same magazines designed for combat, and the same ammunition. The AR-15 and M4 are both designed to fire a 223 round that tumbles upon hitting flesh and rips through the human body. A single round is capable of severing the upper body from the lower body or decapitation. I'll say that again. A single round is capable of severing the upper body from the lower body or decapitation. The round is designed to kill, not wound. And both the AR-15 and M4 contain barrel rifling to make the round tumble upon impact and cause more severe injury. The combination of automatic rifle and 223 round is a very effective killing system. The same can be said of the AR-15. Well guys, what do you think about the Colonel and his claims, his expert claims? <laughs> I have fi I, I have fired full auto in 223 and 556, 762. I'm sure many of you guys you guys have. Hmm. I, yeah. Well, that's the expert witness for the state of California in defending their assault weapon law. Now, the plaintiffs, the Rupp side in this, did also put up an expert witness who is a uh, former FBI agent, former law enforcement officer, and I'm going to show you his opinion as well. Here's page one of the expert witness rebuttal of J. Buford Boone the third. Let's jump right into his opinion and analysis. It is my opinion that Colonel Tucker's report is plagued by inaccuracies and opinions that are contradicted by fact. His claim that a single small arms projectile is capable of severing the upper body from the lower body or decapitation is so ridiculous that it should and actually does 
cast doubt on his qualifications as an expert in the field of firearms, particularly as it relates to wound ballistics. Additionally, there is an inconsistency in his opinion in that at one point he states that stabilizing attributes, pistol grips, are inappropriate for self-defense, while in the next point he says that an attribute, folding stock, is inappropriate for self-defense because it is destabilizing. He then goes into the rest of the colonel's soliloquy and shreds his credibility uh, in this case. And I think it was phenomenal. I really do. Guys and gals, let me know what you think of this down below. This is what the left, the anti-gunners, the politicians who take millions of dollars in donations from those who want ultimate control in this country and suppress the American people. And his now he now has to resort to anything he can to get the job done, including roll out the biggest dummy ever. Now, the colonel might have been phenomenal in warfare. He might have been a great Marine. Never going to question that at all. But on the stand, he shows that he is not a friggin' expert in any weapon system that he's talking about. And, you know, I still claim that being shot at by a weapon system doesn't make you an expert. Because if that was the case, then every member of the Taliban would be an expert in every single type of ordinance, small arms or not. And that's just not the case. Let me know, although they do have quite a bit of our inventory now at their disposal. Isn't that right, Joe Biden? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below. If you enjoy this type of information, then show me the love by hitting that thumbs up button. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel if you could. Helps the channel grow, gets the information out, and shatters the anti-gun algorithm here on the YouTube. And I will see you all on the next one. Be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. It ain't going anywhere, no matter how many dopes they roll out in court. Take care.